Last week, NASA, the biggest black-budget black hole in existence, sucking in $52 million of American taxpayer money every single day, just spent $2.3 billion of your dollars to allegedly land a remote-control car on Mars for the fifth time. Yes, the multi-billion dollar charade of landing on Mars has been happening since 1976, and thanks to the gullible, unquestioning masses enthralled and duped by these ridiculous Hollywood performances, they will most likely continue for decades to come. To begin with, the tiny, reddish, circular light in the sky known as Mars is not a spherical, terra firma world millions of miles away capable of landing a rover on. All of the so-called planets were known to the ancients as wandering stars, because they differ from the fixed stars in their relative motions only. To them, stars were not spherical worlds millions of miles away, or suns trillions of miles away, as we are brainwashed to believe they are today. Stars were and are simply luminaries, immaterial lights in the sky several thousand, not millions, of miles away that revolve over and around the Earth. The Masonic magicians at NASA and the other world space agencies, using lying actor knots and Hollywood tricks like green screens, wires, harnesses, and endless amounts of CGI images, through pseudoscience books and programs, mass media and public education, universities and government propaganda, have systematically indoctrinated the entire world into believing what is nothing but an elaborate piece of science fiction. As you can clearly see for yourself with a bit of research, a telescope or high-zoom camera, and an open, discerning mind actually honestly admitting to yourself what is and what isn't a CGI, computer-generated image, it is obvious that the light in the sky known as Mars is not some science fiction desert planet millions of miles away. The CGI images NASA shows of a spherical world are clearly and admittedly not photographs and look nothing like Mars when seen through a telescope. Meanwhile, the actual photographs NASA claims are coming from this completely other world look exactly like they are coming from Devon Island, Canada, with a red tint added in post-processing. There is nothing being shown in NASA's photographs of Mars that cannot easily be faked on Earth, and given the lack of skepticism or scrutiny from the gullible masses, they barely have to fake any evidence too. Just give them a computer screen of a CGI parachute with a CGI rover landing on a CGI Mars and film a bunch of compartmentalized NASA 20-something employees straight out of space camp getting giddy and high-fiving each other. And that is literally all it takes. The unquestioning masses now thoroughly believe NASA has landed their fifth remote control car tens of millions of miles away and are receiving photographs from it through the internet. Yes, that's right. How do you think NASA sends and receives all data to and from this remote control car? They apparently have internet technology so strong and fast that they can operate a remote control vehicle from tens of millions of miles away. Do we, the public, have any independent evidence whatsoever that such technology actually exists? Of course not, and it isn't necessary. Again, because the science fiction indoctrinated masses are so bedazzled by their pseudoscientific priests at NASA that they don't require things like proof or evidence. When they are pressed on such matters, like the original moon landing tapes, LEM blueprints, telemetry data, and other physical proof, NASA says they filmed over the original moon landing tapes and conveniently lost all the physical evidence. As NASA actor not Don Pettit stated, I would go back to the moon in a nanosecond, but we destroyed that technology, and it's a painful process to build it back again. So that is their excuse for why we haven't been back to the moon in 50 years, because they destroyed the technology, and it's a painful process to build it back again. But, apparently, they have had the tech since 1976, just a few years after the Apollo missions, to send Viking to Mars, which is allegedly over a hundred times further away than the moon. Now let's talk about the supposed parachutes deployed by these rovers when landing. NASA says the surface pressure on Mars is only three-tenths of one percent of the surface pressure on Earth, and equivalent to the pressure at about 23 miles above Earth. This fact alone blows their hoax out of the water. 
Any skydiver knows there is not nearly enough air matter at that pressure to provide any kind of lift for opening and billowing out the parachutes NASA uses to land its Mars probes. No parachute ever devised has been able to successfully deploy at that altitude. They simply stream straight back, then never fill the rest of the way down. Joe Kittinger's record highest, fastest, and longest parachute dive from the Earth's upper atmosphere had him free-falling from only 19 miles high for 15 minutes at 767 miles per hour, and his drogue chute proved useless and offered no deceleration. Yet NASA would have us believe, for example, that their 2008 Phoenix's drone parachute managed to somehow slow it down from 12,738 miles per hour to 123 miles per hour in just 2.86 minutes before its final landing. In other words, NASA is claiming to do something on Mars that we have no evidence is even possible on Earth at significantly lower altitude and 16 times slower speed. NASA must have since gotten the memo because this time, for perseverance, they claim instead that they fitted it with a special aero shell and heat shield which allows the quote drag of the Martian atmosphere to do all the heavy lifting for them, somehow slowing the craft from over 12,500 miles per hour to just 1,000 miles per hour before deploying the parachute. But again, even delving into these facts and figures is superfluous, because NASA simply shows us CGI pictures of a car on a parachute and nobody questions it anyway. NASA.gov says that, quote, the Perseverance spacecraft departs Earth at a speed of about 24,600 miles per hour, about 39,600 kilometers per hour. The trip to Mars will take about seven months and about 300 million miles, 480 million kilometers. The actual fastest vehicle that exists is the SR-71 Blackbird fighter jet, which can travel an incredible Mach 3.3, or 2100 miles per hour. With no evidence whatsoever, NASA claims this ridiculous-looking CGI cupcake on a hut plate can achieve speeds 12 times faster than the fastest actual flying vehicle in the world. The endless red flags were no different with the Mars Phoenix rover landing in 2008. On June 3, 2008, MX News featured a picture given to them by NASA of the Phoenix's first dig into Martian soil, but on June 6, 2008, three days later, the London Daily Telegraph reported from NASA that, quote, another communications glitch stopped NASA's Phoenix lander again from making its first dig into the Martian soil. Unable to keep their stories straight, NASA gave out news blurbs before their time. Then, when Mars Phoenix lander's robotic arm photographed image 89662759, taken at 1439.37 LST, and image 89662868, at 1441.23 LST, only two minutes and 46 seconds later. In the first image, there is a fallen loose screw visible by the leg which disappears before the second photo is taken. NASA themselves claim the robot arm did not touch Martian soil until the next day, so they cannot claim to have moved it themselves, and the topical arrangement of sand and rocks remains exactly the same, so it cannot be explained by strong winds. So who picked up the screw? More than likely, an observant and well-meaning stagehand picked it up between shots. Back during the Mars Spirit rover, NASA messed up then as well, changing the Columbia commemorative plaque from the one featured just seconds before launch to a totally different one when supposedly on Mars. These are all smoking gun pieces of evidence that NASA is faking these supposed Mars landings. But again, without a critically thinking and informed populace, we will continue to be duped over and over by these media charades.